What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Charles Oliveira refused to fight Islam Makachev. After Islam Makachev's win over Alexander Volkanovsky, Dana White indicated that the next fight for the champ was likely a rematch with Charles Oliveira, given that the former champ was less than two weeks away from competing in the rematch at UFC 294. Despite that, White recently indicated that with Makachev healing up from an injury, Oliveira would compete in a title eliminator against Armin Sarukian at UFC 300. Although the fight has taken many by surprise, the way Chael Sonnen sees things, Oliveira simply doesn't want to fight Makachev. He spoke in a recent video for his YouTube channel. He's great. He's proven he's great. He's the second best fighter in the division. He has proven he's the second best fighter in the division. That's pretty damn impressive. But what I'm sharing with you, there's there's one thing that he does not want. And this isn't Chael's. I got my opinion from him. He told me this three times. And then I just told you guys that he doesn't want to fight Islam. He doesn't want to fight Islam to, to the degree that he has refused to fight Islam. As Dana White indicated, the winner of the Oliveira vs. Sarukian fight will compete against Islam Makachev when the champ is ready to return to action. Of course, videos of Makachev on social media have shown he is not injured, leading many to wonder why White indicated that he was injured and unable to compete. Next up, let's take a look at Sean O'Malley fires back at Umar Nurmagomedov. Bantamweight champion Sugar Sean O'Malley may be gearing up for a highly anticipated rematch with Chito Vera. However, the champ has continued to find himself in the crosshairs of some of the division's best contenders. With the title eliminator between Mirab Devashvili and Henry Cejudo rapidly approaching, and fighters like Corey Sanhagen and Umar Nurmagomedov sitting just outside of title contention, it's an exciting time for the 135-pound division. While speaking in a video for GQ Sports, O'Malley addressed Nurmagomedov recently claiming that he will choose how to finish the champ. Yeah, Umar's definitely a dangerous opponent. I think he just has an issue getting two fights. I think he's fought one time in the last like three years. Who knows if it's diet or if it's just training schedule. It takes confidence to take a day off. Some of those guys just go hard every day. Uh, it shows a level of intelligence and they're stupid. Nurmagomedov has also notably struggled to find an opponent willing to fight him, something Dana White has corroborated. After being forced out of his scheduled clash with Corey Sanhagen, the hope among fans will be that the UFC rebooks the bout. However, so far, there's been little movement on the undefeated contender's next fight. Next up, let's take a look at Israel Adesanya reveals the truth on Sean Strickland fight. Israel Adesanya's UFC 293 loss to Sean Strickland marked one of the most stunning upsets in UFC history. With Adesanya finishing longtime rival Alex Pajeda earlier in the year, the lopsided loss to Strickland left many stunned. After being dropped in the first, the last stylebender seemed to be unable to find his rhythm throughout the remainder of the fight, citing the awkward angle of Strickland's jab as something that gave him trouble while speaking in a sit-down interview with Teddy Atlas on his Freestyle Bender channel, where he opened up about the loss. I, so I got to a point in the fight, right, where I was the end of the round, and I remember looking, I haven't actually said this, I looked down, as I looked down, I saw dripless of blood, and I was like, okay, damn, he got me with that jab, because his jab was different. It was something that, I, it was like it was like a hammer fist. It was hitting me with this part of his knuckle. It was still, kind of like what you said, I didn't. I never lost hope. I went back to the corner, I was like, right. So I was even like, when I asked Eugene in the fifth round, like, is this the fifth round? He's like, yeah. I was like, right. And I said, should I just should I just go? And he's like, no, no, let's be tactical. Because I, I wanted to like. As the last stylebender went on to explain, he was ready to go out on a shield if necessary in order to get the challenger out of there once he realized that he was too far behind in the scorecards to win a decision. However, Eugene Berriman urged him to stick to the game plan. With the former champ expected to return in 2024, the big question is, who will he wind up competing against? Now, let's shift gears and take a look at MMA Community Goes Off on Jorge Masvidal vs. Nate Diaz. When Jorge Masvidal announced recently via social media that he was unretired, many fans theorized as to what the news could mean. Given that he's still under contract with the UFC, it sounded as though his options were limited to a UFC return. Since then, however, Happy Punch has indicated that the plan is for Masvidal and Stockton superstar Nate Diaz to compete in a highly anticipated rematch, this time in the boxing ring. Although according to Ariel Helwani, Diaz's rep declined to confirm the news, he indicated in a follow-up tweet that neither fighter was in discussions to return for UFC 300, with the rematch in boxing being the end goal all along. Amid Masvidal opening as a heavy betting favorite for this fight, fans have continued to share their reactions to the bout, with one writing, lamest fight there could be, C-class fighter who got beat up by Jake Paul versus backyard fighter who never had the makings of a champion. Another member of the MMA community questioned whether there was even any interest in the fight, writing, 
I might be very wrong, but is there an audience for this on pay-per-view? I can't imagine it sells over 100k even at a reasonable price point. They're both old, don't box. Jorge scored his KOs with a knee and Superman punch, and the fight has zero stakes. Another criticized the trend of MMA fighters competing in boxing, writing, why are two MMA fighters boxing one another? This is pathetic and nothing but a money grab. Surely no is arsed about watching these two have a boxing match, nothing at stake, quite pathetic if you ask me. Another agreed, writing, so tired of MMA guys boxing, from watching them in MMA compared to boxing is not even close to the same, lame. Another pointed out that if the two are going to fight, they might as well run things back in the UFC, writing, I'd have more respect if they just ran it back in the UFC where the real fights are, not this scripted bullshit, boxing shit, scamming people for money. One fan summarized the general sentiment of the combat sports community as a whole, writing, Oh great, two slow old retired MMA fighters deciding to box just so they can train not as hard and give us a boring sparring match. Whatever, I'll probably watch because I'm a hardcore combat sports fan. Although the fight is still in the works, it sounds as though if Masvidal winds up getting released from his UFC contract, there would be little in the way of a fight happening. Next, let's take a look at UFC fight updates. With a stacked schedule ahead, the UFC has continued to announce exciting fights while rounding out upcoming cards. Without further ado, let's take a look at today's UFC fight updates, starting with three new bookings for UFC Mexico on February 24th. The event will now play host to a fight between Daniel Zellerber and Francisco Prado, with Zellerber looking to build on a two-fight win streak and Prado looking to build momentum on a win over Otman Azatar back in July. The event will also play host to a featherweight clash between Mohamed Naimov and Eric Silva, with Naimov looking to extend his unbeaten streak in the UFC after rattling off back-to-back -back victories last year. While on the flip side, Silva will be looking to bounce back from a loss to TJ Brown in his UFC debut back at UFC 282 after a year-long hiatus. The third and final bout announced for the card will see Luis Ronaldo Rodriguez compete against Dennis Bondar, with Rodriguez looking to successfully make his UFC debut amid a five-fight victory streak. On the flip side, Bondar will be looking to snap a two-fight skid that has seen him go winless in the UFC. The following month, two new fights have been added to the UFC 299 card, with Michelle Pajeda set to fight Michael Oleschuk and Robelis de Spain set to compete against Josh Parisian. The event will see Pajeda look to build on an impressive win streak that most recently saw him compete at 185 pounds, while Oleschuk looks to build on an August victory over Chidi in Jaquani. In the case of the Robelis de Spain vs Josh Parisian fight, de Spain, an Olympic Taekwondo competitor, will be looking to make his successful UFC debut amid a four-fight win streak that's seen him rattle off four straight first-round KOs. On the flip side, Parisian will be looking to snap a two-fight skid that saw him go winless in 2023. With the UFC set to return this weekend, the year seems to be off to a hot start for the promotion. Next, let's take a look at John Jones fires back at Tom Aspinall again. John Jones and Tom Aspinall have continued to go back and forth on social media as of late. The way their interim champ sees things, if Jones isn't going to be defending his heavyweight title in a unification bout, then he has no business sitting atop the division. With Jones sidelined for the near future as he recovers from a torn peck, Aspinall has continued to voice his frustrations on social media. In addition to his repeated criticism of Stipe Miocic, Aspinall has also been engaged in a verbal spat with John Jones. On the heels of the heavyweight champ undergoing elbow surgery, he decided to respond to Aspinall in a series of tweets, taking aim at the interim champ's resume while dismissing 90% of the fighters Aspinall has beat and calling his interim title an imaginary championship. As Jones notably indicated on Tuesday, the one thing he refuses to do is stick around for too long like some other fighters. The tweet led many fans to believe that Jones was confirming his retirement after the upcoming fight against Miocic. However, that doesn't appear to be the case. As Jones was quick to write back, the tweet was not meant to be indicative of his plan to retire. In a follow-up, he alleged that beating Aspinall simply doesn't do anything for his legacy. With no word on what the UFC has in store for Aspinall, while he waits for Jones vs Miocic to play out, it sounds like this saga is far from being over. Next, let's take a look at Conor McGregor will never be the same. Ahead of Conor McGregor's highly anticipated return to the octagon, a number of questions remain about how he'll look given that he's been out for several years and will be looking to return from one of the most gruesome injuries in all of professional sports. The way longtime UFC veteran Matt Brown sees things, if McGregor returns, he's unlikely to ever come close to his former greatness. He spoke on a recent episode of The Fighter vs. The Writer to discuss the state of McGregor's career as he looks to begin training camp for his big return. He's not getting back to a title. He's not He's not going to do anything uh, significant ever again. He's got 500 mil in the bank. <laughs> like, what? what's a, you know, a few mil 
for fighting, you know, somebody like Chandler, what's that going to do for him? That's like if I gave you 10 bucks, you'd be like, <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> what do you want me to do with this, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not even going to change your day, nonetheless, your life. <laughs> so he doesn't have any motivation whatsoever to do this other than being in the spotlight. As Brown also indicated, despite McGregor announcing the fight for the end of June, nothing has been officially announced by the UFC. Although Michael Chandler indicated that his team has been in touch with the UFC, given that nothing has been announced by the UFC, he remains convinced that the fight is not going to happen. The MMA community reacts to Sean O'Malley's recent picture he posted to Instagram. In the photo, Sean looks noticeably more jacked than his usual self. Fans are speculating that USADA not being a part of the UFC has something to do with his bigger muscles. Here's what some fans had to say. USADA left and every UFC fighter turns into Vitor. Buddy moving up to middleweight I see. Sean heard USADA not around anymore and had to lock in bro on that Paolo secret juice. That USADA absence do hit different when you're the champ. All the UFC fighters on steroids now. The Cheeto leg is looking a little bigger than the other one. Bro need an extra protection for the perineal nerve. Sean Strickland goes off on the UFC for their lack of consequences when it comes to being popped for steroids. He posted to Twitter saying, If you pop for steroids, EPO, whatever the f it is, it should be a lifetime ban. Tainted supplements is one thing, but the real sh lifetime ban. If UFC or athletic commissions gave a f it would be standard. Most of the roster would agree to this. Top comments. I know it sounds crazy, but people need to stop giving Dana such a hard time. Believe it or not, he'll be missed when he's gone. Ian calling people sheep when he's the one eating out of the hands of a manipulator. Imagine Conor McGregor calling someone out for steroids. I'm tired of John saying he's the best when he's not a people's champ and he's been caught for roids. And not even being able to handle himself after a win, keeps getting DUI left and right and beating his wife, then still claims his legacy is top tier, but was very super juiced up and like, shut the F up. He couldn't even keep his belt half the time. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.